We got work to do. Welcome to Highway to Hell, a supernatural podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Kristen. And we have guests. Yes. <laughs> uh, joining us are Jeremy <laughs> and Chris from the Monster of the Week Supernatural podcast. How are you doing, guys? Hello. Yeah, absolutely. Hi. Thanks for um, having us. We were just chatting about this right before, and you guys have been on. I think you guys started like right before we started. Um, but you guys are already like up to season nine, right? Yeah, we're we're uh, in the back half of season nine, so we're we're way ahead of you guys. Um, but like Chris mentioned in the in the green room, uh, going back to season four was was such a such a such a pleasurable experience. These boys are so young and dumb. It's so fun. <laughs> Aren't they sweet babies? Little boys. I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah. Just sweet yeah. baby angels. And how'd you guys get into Supernatural? Um, so I, uh, saw it like a preview for the show, uh, before it aired and was like, oh, <clears throat> horror movie, Americana, urban myth, like two hunks, let, let's do it. So I've been, I've been on board <laughs> since the the very, very beginning, um, somewhere around season nine or 10 is when, uh, my wife fell off. So it became, it switched from the, we're going to watch this like the day it airs to like, oh, we'll get to it this weekend. And then eventually she was like, I don't really care about the show anymore. And then. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, we just so it just became the thing like oh hey I, I have like four hours of free time let me binge these episodes um and then we started the podcast and uh it's been really difficult to not get ahead of the podcast and just get gotta gotta want to get ahead of it it is i've mentioned that before <laughs> because as y'all know like our podcast is spoiler free for me since i'm the newbie being introduced to it with each episode and i have to pace myself i watch an episode i take notes we do a podcast about it i have to wait <laughs> all of that time in between i can't just sit there and binge yeah what a- i think when i started the show season four was on the air uh my best friend saw it randomly thought this sounds good rented the dvds from netflix because that's the thing that we used to do i guess um and he just kept saying like dude you got to watch this the show is right up your alley you're gonna totally love it and i resisted it for so long and i would watch an episode or two like when we would hang out and it took probably like three or four months to get through season one but at, by the end of season one i was completely hooked uh and it was very nice to be able to get the dvds and to to completely binge it um but unfortunately i caught up by the time that season five started to air, um, which is like cliffhangers all over the place. And, the, you know, it's just it's it's a big season. So uh, it was rough having to uh, just suddenly start waiting to watch Supernatural. But yeah. Um, and in that time period, I think I watched the series for oh, five or six times over because I really got obsessed with it. Uh, and like Jeremy, I got up to about season 10 or 11 and then lost whatever recordings I had had on my DVR at the time and thought, okay, I'll wait until uh, the episode comes on Netflix. And then I didn't get caught up. And then uh, as a joke, we we mentioned starting a Supernatural podcast. <laughs> 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 what a funny joke. Here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was, it Wait, was what extremely happened? funny, super funny <laughs> until somebody said uh what if we called it monster of the week and then we we're like oh well that's the perfect name we have to do it now <laughs> yeah so don't like... name it now you're gonna get attached <laughs> yeah yeah that's uh, awesome yeah <laughs> yeah jeremy and i did separate podcasts um about totally different things and we listened to each other's podcasts and i joked on mine to my friend hey let's start a supernatural <laughs> podcast and then it's have true. jeremy slip it into my DMs. Like, hey, man if you do that i'm uh, totally down <laughs> Oh my God. And I just announced uh, (laughs) most recently on the podcast that I'm not going to watch the rest of season 13 and 14 and 15. Are are you guys doing the same? Are you holding off from watching so you can get to it with the podcast? I've been going back and forth on this so much because I have um, (laughs) like way back when we started the podcast, it got me like super hype about Supernatural again. And I tried to pick it up from where I left off. And doing that and then also trying to record the podcast and like think about what's happening in the current season and like you know analyze it make dumb jokes about it and all that stuff it was just too much for my brain like i couldn't handle two different timelines of supernatural yeah um so i think like i'm just gonna 
like I've been spoiled on a lot of stuff. I haven't seen past season 11 or so, but I've, I know like a lot of stuff that happens and we covered the, um, the wayward sisters episode. So like we've seen some of the stuff in the, in the future, but I just, I'm just going to accept my, uh, like, I'm just going to get spoiled on season 15. It's going to be kind of a bummer, but like, I, I just, I can't manage in my head, like two totally different timelines. So. Yeah, that makes sense. I think for me, it would just be really confusing to see different Sam haircuts at the same time. I really get attached to the oh, hair yeah, per totally. season. Chris, yeah. is our, just uh, Chris, Chris is the Sam hair expert on our podcast. I don't know what oh. you guys, I don't know if you guys have, I know you do. No, that's you, good. We need a hair a expert because we try to analyze so, a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, we do. We don't track the hair. Um, we've had moments where we really like go in deep with the hair, but not, not quite tracking it through. I'd, l- I'd love to see a timeline like that's. That that would be amazing. <laughs> Back when um, I don't remember what season was happening, but yes. uh, there was a like the, there was a supernatural cover for like Entertainment Weekly magazine or something, and uh, one of our um, overseas listeners was like, I, "I really want to find this magazine, but I can't find it locally." And I was like, "Oh, I'll buy it and I'll send it to you." And I, I bought it and I never sent it to her because I'm a terrible person. Uh, but <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so, sorry, Nez, if you're out there. Um, <laughs> but they had they literally had a uh, like a like a. A grid of pictures of Sam, and you, and it was a game to try to match the hair to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it's lot like of fun. Sam hair bingo or something. It's awesome. It was a real big like you know take a picture and tag yourself yeah. of which Sam haircut you you are right now. So <laughs> that's awesome. Oh man, well, um, there's a lot to this episode. I mean, yeah, we we got a lot to go through. For sure. Are y'all ready for this? All right. So we start with the little IMDb description for anyone who needs a little recap or reminder at the beginning of the episode of which one this is. So IMDb says, uh, oh, by the way, I didn't even say the name of it. We're covering uh, episode nine of season four. I know what you did last summer. So this is the one where Sam, Dean and Ruby discover the existence of a female prophet named Anna Milton who can hear the voices of angels and thus figures into the plans of a demon named Alistair. Who wants to use her as a tool against the angels very succinct description yeah i think it's interesting that they use the term mm-hmm. prophet also because we didn't get any sort of yeah. inkling that that's what she actually is in no. the episode no she's um, just hearing things also i just love the name of this yeah. episode because i know what you did last summer it is of course a 97 film written by <laughs> Kevin Williamson, who also wrote Scream, one of my favorite movies ever. And so I just very excited about that. How, how does it? Uh, yeah, oh, we're yes. definitely gonna find oh, out. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we're definitely gonna find out a wait, we're a little bit TMI on what Sam did last summer. <laughs> really? Because I was like, you can keep going. <laughs> 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 so this was directed by charles beeson and written by we've got eric kripke always on the credits for this but also sarah gamble um which is why it was so good obviously obviously um i wanted to mention some of the actors that come out in this one we have julie mcniven as anna she's been in a lot uh she was in Mad Men, um and uh stargate universe yeah. which i think is what i've seen her in <laughs> she's uh recently been on the um dc tv show called uh, doom patrol which is a oh, really uh, jeremy carver joint so um our our friend crowley shows up over in that then that's tv series and obviously um this chick does and yeah there's some there's, there's a bunch of supernatural crossover with that with that show that's that's cool. cool uh we have mark ralston as alistair this guy You've seen him. There's no way. He's just been in so much. You know, you recognize his face. Um, he was in Shawshank Redemption, Aliens, Rush Hour, uh, really? and all of that before he was in Supernatural. Um, he was in this an episode really of the crust of his career then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's all downhill after Supernatural. Um, <laughs> and then he was in The Departed. He was in an episode of Angel. Uh, yeah. And he was in The X-Files. So th- this dude's been around cool uh, wow. yeah uh gwyneth walsh was the psychiatrist at the oh my god mental hospital <laughs> did you recognize where she was from no but you did because it's a show that you keep recommending to me 
oh no i wasn't talking about a show what show oh she was an american horror story so i thought maybe oh. that was yeah no i didn't recognize her from that i what recognized her say? from xenon uh, <laughs> the 21st century Yes, she's Xenon's mom. Like the Disney Channel original movie. <laughs> what the heck is a Xenon? What are you okay, talking about? Okay, so that's about? the other. Yeah, that's just, the reason Jeremy, I didn't you're know. Too old. You missed I it. I was a Nickelodeon girl. Ah, uh, okay. I was a Disney Channel millennial. So there yeah. you go. The young end of the millennials. <laughs> Same. Well, I've slowly been introducing Christine to some Disney original channel movies. So that's your next one right there. And I love them all. Yeah, oh yeah that's yeah. the next podcast you guys gotta start um she's been in a bunch of sci-fi stuff too she was in uh the star trek movie generations and star trek next generation the show uh and she was in stargate sg1 so she's you know been around a lot of sci-fi stuff um i didn't have any other production info and we don't have any music in this episode is there anything else you want to mention before we get into the story of the episode? I don't think so. I don't have anything. Alrighty. Okay. So we get our then and now segments at the beginning of the episode. Uh, then we have clips of Castiel, clips of when Bobby is showing Sam and Dean the rising of the witnesses as a sign of the apocalypse. Um, clips of Lilith. And... I don't think I like you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> and uh, then that demon that Sam and Ruby had tied up asking Sam uh, about what Dean did when he was in hell and the raising of Samhain and a uh, flashback of Uriel telling Sam about him being too much trouble and, you know, if you get to be too much trouble, blah, blah, blah. Here's my threat. And also uh, urging him again to ask Dean what he remembers from hell. You know what? I did have something I lied. Oh, my God. Because Okay, because right before we covered the It's a Great Pumpkin Sam Winchester episode, yeah. somebody wrote to us, one of our um, listeners, and said, please, please don't pronounce what is usually pronounced Sam Hain as, as that. Pronounce it Samhain, which is the correct way to pronounce it. But I was snooping around IMDb and it said one of the like trivia facts was that Sam Hain is pronounced correctly in this episode. Uh, the character is a nod to Sam Hain from an episode of the real Ghostbusters when Halloween was fe forever in which the ghost of Halloween is summoned during a ritual and the creature creatures of the night follow him around like a like, ugh, like the Pied Piper. SM says. So, I mean, I guess that's interesting, interesting, but of the two like culture references, which is the one that's more You know what I'm saying? No, yeah. And Def and Alan, definitely Alan Ghostbusters. Is... Yeah. I'm on the Ghostbusters side. <laughs> <laughs> and also I'm that just it's, feeling uh... silly cuz like obviously I've seen Ghostbusters, but I would never have thought of that. Like I didn't, you know, I wouldn't have remembered that or like made the connection, but it being like uh, you know, a, a being in history is more i don't know like no, i, I, I would have made that connection more easily um and also that it's inspiration for um sam hain the god demon of halloween and ray bradbury's book the halloween tree which we read together mm, yeah we did that one time but um <laughs> we did a little book cup but um i don't know I, I i agree with you like it's probably Samhain, or maybe it's a mixture of the two but i just thought that was interesting i was like what it's telling us okay <laughs> or maybe they just put that in afterwards and they were like no we pronounced <laughs> it correctly you know <laughs> they're just covering their asses yeah you got to retcon that stuff in so, so you, that exactly. is a sam yeah. that's a sam winchester move <laughs> right sam himself went in he changed oh, the yeah. hacker, man. Sure hacker. everyone knew he was right <laughs> he learned that in college yeah he wasn't he wasn't wrong christine i want to give you i want to give you some major props for your uh previously on summary because um again like we, we covered this episode and i didn't realize it was this long ago but almost two years ago and on my previously on notes it just says quote a bunch of angel shit <laughs> so you, <laughs> you went you went into a lot more detail than obviously we did on our podcast <laughs> so. you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> I really I'm so glad that I was able to jog your memory. <laughs> um I mean you're not like, like Sam, you're not wrong. It's a bunch of angel shit. <laughs> right. It's just yeah. another way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Um, okay, so then after all of those flashbacks, we get to now. We open to a woman in a mental hospital, or what looks like a mental hospital. Um, a psychiatrist is speaking to her, and she says that the woman is in Connor Beverly Behavioral Medicine Center. I looked up the name, and it doesn't mean anything as far as I can tell. Um, the woman named Anna tells the psychiatrist that she was trying to warn everyone, but then she just blows it off. She's like, forget it. But the psychiatrist pushes, pushes her uh, what she was trying to warn everyone about, and then she says, the end is coming, the apocalypse. And then she says, a demon named Lilith is trying to break the 66 seals to free Lucifer from hell, who will bring the apocalypse. And we're like, what the fuck are you? How, how do you know this? How does she know this? What the hell? Um, yeah. <laughs> totally Anna kind of tunes out what the psychiatrist is saying and tilts her head. And she's listening to some whispering that we can hear. The doctor is like, oh, so there are 66 seals. And she says, oh, no, no, there are 600 possible seals. And all Lilith has to do is break 66 of them, which is why it's almost impossible to stop her. And that's why the angels are losing. Who invented what? this system? Like, why Why would you have so many? Like, I mean, like my car has one key. <laughs> like, I saw, like, you don't, if you have the key, then you got it. But I mean, like, why would you have 600 of these things and only require 10% of them to be broken? Yeah, I don't know. This sounds like it another really Samuel Colt uh, joint here. Mr. Colt, yeah, please. It's always doing something it weird. It doesn't make any sense at all. And, but it's insane. It's, it's, it's even more like, this is impossible. This is an impossible feat. Like, yeah, Sam and Dean should just give up right now at this point because <laughs> there's already some that are broken and it doesn't make any sense. How are they supposed to fight this? Yeah, their jobs just became a whole lot harder. Yeah, at this point, did we know how many seals no, that there were? This is, is this the, the first, first time that we're hearing that there's actually this more is, than yeah. 66? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, okay. And before so we were news. under the impression that there were just 66 <laughs> and we were like, oh, okay, so it's an Inuyasha kind of thing, you know, where they got to go after... <laughs> The 66 seals, that's it. <laughs> but also, whenever they talked about right. it, it was right. the 66 seals. So they definitely set it up to make it seem like there were only 66. And then they were like, ah, psych, there's 600. Y'all yeah. are screwed. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, everything just got way worse. I actually really like... Um, some of what they do here in this scene with with Anna, you know, I don't think it's necessarily always like fun to play with mental illness in your plot and just like make that a plot thing. But I do like the way that Supernatural and especially I think in season four with Sam dealing with his like psychic powers and everything and, and Anna here. Um, I like that we see kind of the toll that this takes uh, that the Supernatural takes on regular people. Um, it makes her seem like she needs to be in a mental institution and it makes Sam suffer through, you know, whatever he's suffering through this season. Uh, and it's, it's interesting that they kind of, they go there, they, they add a, a gravity to their characters and to the world by, by kind of pushing back on, on these people who experience yeah, supernatural agreed. events. I think it's, it's interesting. Um, and I, I also agree that it's not always like the best, uh, I don't know, device to use for a plot, but it definitely works here because she probably, you know, it's convincing that she would be in a hospital for this kind of talk. But we know better. And thankfully, this is not this is not like made to no. be funny, which I think is the, <laughs> right. the a lot of times the the problem with re relying on that no. kind of crutch with characterization or anything. So like Anna seems extremely sad and damaged in some way, but obviously, like we know as the audience, like she's telling the truth, and mm -hmm. just like Chris mentioned, like that that kind of push and pull and like oh man like this these things that we deal with that these hunks just kind of kill and and take care of like actually have have ramifications with these characters which i think is really interesting yeah absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. so in the later in the evening a nurse working at the hospital comes into the room to give anna her medicine she's drawing stained glass windows uh, on her bed and she turns around and looks at the nurse and then jumps up and asks him what happened to his face his eyes go black and he closes the door behind him. And Anna looks over at a metal cabinet and moves it with her mind across the room where it slams into the yeah, demon okay. and he cracks his head against the window and the door. He's passed out and Anna escapes from the room. So that's cool. Yeah. She's got powers. What? what? What did you think of those powers, Christine? Like, I know you said something. Yeah, when we watched watch. it the first time, I was like, is she a special child? But I don't think so. I don't think so. 
And that was my first thought as well. The first time that I saw this wondering, mm-hmm. like, is she linked to, to Sam and, and, and yellow eyes and all that? Cause uh, at this point, supernatural is really good at like continuously calling back to things like that. So you never quite yeah. know what's, and I was play. like, Oh, did they miss her with all the other special children? But, but somehow I don't think so. Mm-hmm. But so, she has powers. Yeah, she does. She just knocked him out cold. <laughs> <laughs> did it seem like she was surprised to use those powers too? Like it didn't seem on a rewatch, especially like it didn't seem like she even knew what she was going to do. It reminded me, I'm a big X-Men fan and you know, there's that coming of age moment that every X-Men has where they, their powers like start and they can't really control them. Like it seemed like she was like, Oh shit, I just moved that with my mind. Like what, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did get a little bit of that for sure. And it made uh, me think, why didn't she use them later on? And that's probably because she doesn't have any sort of control over them. It was just sort of a surprise to her. And maybe um, she's keeping it to herself, too. Mm-hmm. She's not really sure what's going on. Mm-hmm. So the next scene, uh, Sam's all drunky, drunky pants at a bar and betting on a pool game. He bets $500 have, against this guy. <laughs> what? I have a lot of issues with Jared Padalecki trying to act drunk. He's not good at it. <laughs> look, he's look. He's just super not good at it. <laughs> he's improved since season two. So you got to give him that. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. What was the, I agree. I don't remember what, what episode it was where um, they're in the, the hotel with the little girl and the play things. Um, play things. Yes. That one where he's just like, oh, yeah. Like, I think I even asked on our podcast, like, has he ever seen a drunk person before? <laughs> like, is he just doing this from like, did somebody tell him what it was like? <laughs> I think we said the same thing he was just a young man jeremy he <laughs> yeah didn't he know had never gotten drunk before clearly <laughs> this this feels like this is the first time that we're seeing the boys actually hustle pool like we know that that's how they make money gene has said it before but right now like this they're in the act of hustle and pool pretending to be yeah drunk and it's, i think it is like people. they've talked about that before but we haven't really seen them doing that in a bar especially with sam at the point like i feel like dean's always the one who's like trying to you know, make the deal or be shady or something. But now Sam's taking the lead and mm-hmm. <laughs> pretending to be drunk. Yeah. Season one, Sam was totally talking shit about Dean <laughs> running credit card scams and all of that. So he's a changed man. He's definitely, uh, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have season those four, Sam's morals. Gotta eat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't give a fuck anymore. He's over it. We need, we need money. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He, needs up. Protein. No, he needs to keep eating. <laughs> Daddy needs That's his protein. Expensive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> i do really love when they show the boys yeah. doing their like regular day-to-day lives though um like this is something that it doesn't need to be in the scene because the scene is sam spotting ruby at the bar in a minute um but we get just a little bit of like color and information about their day-to-day lives which i always really appreciate and i think yeah season four especially seems like it has like a little moment here yeah. or there throughout almost every episode like them brushing their teeth beside the impala or just something silly that you don't need but again, it kind of grounds everything, you know, because things are going off the rails. You got angels and, and seals yeah, and Lilith, sure. and like things are pretty crazy. <laughs> so those little moments of like humanity, I think, really they are getting better at that. It's just kind of like giving us glimpses into what their life is like when we're not around, following them like hunting or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Sam bets five hundred dollars. <sighs> All right, puts it on the table, makes a perfect break. And then he looks up and sees Ruby sitting at the bar. And then he says, keep the money. And Dean's like, what? What? <laughs> what an idiot. Um, yeah, Sam, Sam you, can, you can go hang out with your girlfriend and collect $500. I, like, that's what is, I'm saying. <laughs> you don't have to choose yeah. one or the other. Daddy needs to eat. Like $500, you said. man, that's a lot. So he goes over to Ruby and Dean follows him. Ruby tells them that she's heard that a girl named Anna Milton escaped from a locked ward yesterday, and all the demons are out looking for her. She doesn't know who she is, but she's guessed that Anna's important because the orders are to capture her alive. Dean's totally against it. He doesn't trust her still, and he tries to tell her that they're working another job. He's like, yeah, well, we're busy. (laughs) And uh, then he just kind of gets over it because Sam's like, no, this could be a real lead. And so he asks Ruby for the hospital name and the scene cuts. So, um, yeah, thoughts on that? Mm-hmm. I do love, again, I love Genevieve as Ruby. Like her just arguing with Dean is so much better than Katie Cassidy arguing with Jensen. It's, oh, like she's she just plays a much better Ruby. Well, she's not as annoying. Yeah. 
And um, she every time she argues with Dean, she just seems like she really <laughs> can't be bothered. Like at any minute, she's like, I'm going to leave. Like if I'm helping you and if you don't want my <laughs> yeah. advice, I'll just leave. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's actually more convincing. She's not just being like sassy and annoying like previous Ruby. Right. <laughs> so Dean and Sam are driving to the hospital that they got from Ruby, the name that they got from her. Uh, and the hospital is three days away. And Sam's like, you know, Dean's bitching about it. And Sam's like, well, we've gone further for less. And I'm like, yeah, Dean, chill out. You just, just got to do it. <laughs> Dean's like, well, you just lost $500. How are we going to get there, Sam? bro? So I don't know. <laughs> that was my burrito fund, my dude. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Three days is a long time in this Impala without a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Although now we know that Sam's gassy. So maybe that's not the best course of action. <laughs> oh, Dean does not let Sam have burritos anymore. That's, yeah. Yeah, no. yeah, he gets the There's already enough sulfur in the Impala. So, uh, yeah, Dean's pissed that they're doing this, but Sam calls him out on being pissed about it uh, only because Ruby gave them the tip. Dean still can't understand why Sam trusts her, and he asks Sam for more details, but Sam's like, oh, yeah? How about let's trade stories? Damn. Mm -hmm. Tell him. Don't I come at Sam with your bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> Classic it's Sam really good. And I was like, yeah, how about that, Dean? Someone's got a story, too, that you're not telling us about. <laughs> so we get a flashback. Okay, this is really great. It kind of like zeroes in on Sam's face, and they're both like thinking about their stories. And we get a flashback to six months earlier, and Sam is frantically digging a hole to summon the Crossroads demon. He covers up his box and waits, but no one comes. And then he just screams into the night, come on, where the hell are you? And throws an empty liquor bottle. And then yeah, the so badly, demon shows badly up. badly drunk again. Yeah, <laughs> oh, although I think he's gotten drunk. better. I don't know. <laughs> this is a sad <laughs> angry beefcake, and he just needs to let the world know. I do like this drunk, Sam. I also felt, I don't know, I felt like the what the hell are you waiting for uh, or where the hell are you was kind of like a call to what are you waiting for from the actual I know what you did last summer uh, movie where Jennifer Love Hewitt is just like yelling at the sky. Oh, yeah, good call. But that just might be me. No, I can see that. Uh, so then the Crossroads demon appears. And this is just like a used car salesman. Right? Yeah. He's not a sexy yeah. woman anymore. He's just a guy. Who's kind of far away and uh, they start walking closer to each other and the crossroads demon asks to see the demon blade. So Sam pulls it out and slams it down on the railing that's between them. And the demon comes closer and they start talking about a deal. Uh, he's the crossroads demon is not into it and he puts his hand down on the rail and then Sam picks up the blade and stabs his hand so that he's like nailed to the fence. Um, He's really good Sad at angry beefcake at it again. Uh, he's got the beefcake part down. <laughs> so <laughs> they're never going to answer his calls after this. He shot the last one. No, and yeah, they really don't like, like Sammy. Come on, buddy. <laughs> I also really love uh, the fact that we've gone from in season one, like what's a demon to I'm going to, I'm going to pin this, this crossroads demon on a fence so that I can question him about my brother who is in hell. Like the yeah. that the show goes through is crazy. Yeah. I, I, I just, I'm so here for it. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely more of an expert. Um, Sam yells at the demon to take him in Dean's place. He says it's a fair trade, but the demon refuses and says they have Dean right where they want him. Oh shit. And then he says, you want to kill me? Go ahead. I've made mm -hmm. peace with my Lord. Sam pulls the knife out and the scene cuts back and the guys are sitting in the Impala, just sitting in silence. So wow. damn, now we know a little bit of what happened while Dean was gone. Um, yeah. And he was trying to switch places with him. Yeah. Um, you do know that we track every time Sam and Dean cry I was not sure about this episode because uh, so much misty eyes. Well, he, his eyes are just red, right? It was, yeah, definitely just some glistening. Yeah, it could be from from being he's drunk. Sad too. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I. It's it's. He's definitely. Sad. I mean, Sam's There's been no sad since he was that. like four. So like, sad is a given. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah, it's a personality. Yeah. Trait Sam's first point. word was "take me to a therapist." <laughs> <laughs> Poor baby. I do, yeah, 
Yeah, I feel like we need to give one on the tracker for this episode, at least uh, for Misty Eyes, because he's just, I mean. Yeah, I could honestly be convinced of a couple of other instances, too. Aside from Yeah, this possibly. So we're going to have to go one. back and, and study. <laughs> yeah, just sad boy. B-O-I. And just a, another example of a of a Winchester like willing to sacrifice themselves for another Winchester. Like, I feel like if you guys don't have a spreadsheet for that, like you should probably like start a really huge one. <laughs> That's cause... actually not a bad idea because uh, <laughs> what we recently had too in the episodes leading up to this was a conversation between Sam and Dean, where Dean was trying to convince Sam, like, no, we can't keep doing this. We can't keep playing into their hands and going round and round and sacrificing ourselves for each other because mm-hmm. they know that they can use us against each other. Like, that's that's now the pattern that we're in. Yeah, and even the Crossroads True. demon calls it like a <laughs> like a Winchester roulette or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like they're just they just keep on switching places. It's not John, it's Dean. If it's not Dean, mm-hmm. it's Sam. It's totally. just a never end. And I can see why. I mean, you know, we wanted to know that Sam did everything he possibly could to get Dean back, and now we do. So the next scene, mm-hmm. Sam and Dean are at the hospital speaking with the psychiatrist who is talking to Anna. And she says the nurse who got knocked out had some amnesia and can't remember what happened. But they think Anna planned the attack and waited behind the door for him. The psychiatrist says that up until two months ago, Anna was a student who had a bright future, but she had a mental break caused by schizophrenia. Anna was having delusions, and then she shows them Anna's sketches, and Sam and Dean flip through them and see the symbol that Bobby showed them, along with writing that says, Raising of the Witnesses. They look at each other like, what? Uh And turn the page and see a sketch of Raising Samhain. You happy, Kristen? (laughs) Look, it wasn't me. It was obviously Sam. It's obviously Ghostbusters. That. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dr. Halloween from now on. <laughs> avoid avoid the word altogether. <laughs> Mr. Halloween. Okay. I love this. I love the sketchbook of things that have happened to the Winchesters. Yeah. Like, I feel like this should be a children's book at Hot Topic. For <laughs> <laughs> that that should, should be great. She's like yeah. keeping track of all Absolutely. these things. And it, with each page that they turn, they just break out in more and more of sweat. <laughs> they realize oh uh-huh. shit I, it's more I stuff had about some, us like questions about it one i thought she was just kind of like listening to the voices as she seen stuff also i guess we hadn't really established that before but there's like depictions of lilith as a little girl and yeah. and sam hayne Samhain, however you want to pronounce it and then also um i don't know why she keeps on drawing like the church they told you us know? why mm-hmm because it's her safe place Uh uh-huh yeah i think it's because the church ends up being her it's her father's church and and sam's like well if you were religious and you had demons on your ass and you were scared where would you want to go so she's like drawing the place where she wants to go and feel safe okay i mean and it makes sense that she's you know she's so scared by everything that's happening because everyone's telling her that she's crazy so maybe she's just you know seeking sanctuary it's funny that when they asked Dean to draw his safe place, it was just an angel in a trench coat. But that's, I mean, there's no, I mean, I'm sure that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> See, a few episodes back, I would have set a bar. But now I know what uh, Destiel <laughs> is. And this is. <laughs> oh, did you just recently discover Destiel? Yes, is, I, that, is that a thing? Yeah, I just okay. introduced her to the word. Yes. Guys, wow. I'm oh, so, wow. that's awesome. I'm so fresh. <laughs> That's such a um, w- like we went through a journey on think- our podcast because both of us had watched a bunch of it, um, but had not really gotten deep into the fandom. Like I was on Tumblr, so I like I knew stuff, but like I didn't like go hard into fanfic or anything. And so like rewatching it again and getting into season four was like, oh yeah, those two dudes are totally making eyes <laughs> with each other. Like, well, how did I not see this before? <laughs> yeah, we're definitely it. watching it with that lens. <laughs> I can't help. Yeah, exactly. I can't help it's hard it not now, to. now that I know that that's like a, a thing. And something that they acknowledge later, <laughs> like, you know, the actors and show creators and everything. I'm like, oh, man, this is so good. <laughs> yeah. It's here to so, say. So looking at all the sketches, obviously the guys immediately know that something's up. Um, the psychiatrist says that Anna's father was a church deacon and her, delus- her delusions took on a religious overtone. So Sam and Dean track down Anna's parents' house and go there. 
Uh, They see that cars are in the driveway, but nobody's answering the door. So Dean lets himself in and they look around and find Anna's parents dead on the floor with their throats cut. Sam leans down and finds sulfur on the floor next to them. And they look around trying to figure out where Anna could be. And Sam sees in a picture on the mantle, the same stained glass window that was in her sketch. So this is where Sam's like, you know, if you were religious and scared, where would you go? Um, this is really sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they didn't get to ask their usual questions about ghosts and flickering lights and the smell of sulfur. They just yeah, unfortunately yeah. had a couple bodies. And that's not what you want to see. And I really liked Sam's reaction because there aren't really words for it. Like they don't know these people, but it's still sad. So they just walk in and he just like gives this huge sigh like, oh, no. And realizing that they're just like right. only a few minutes late yeah. or, you know, they're they're on the trail, Ugh, but they're just a little bit too late. Upsetting. So then they go to Anna's dad's church. I don't know how they know which one it is, but that's okay. I mean, hopefully there's like two churches in town. Um, <laughs> and then they just, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. just drive around until yeah. they there's see only that like church. They just edit out the like 10 <laughs> churches that they have to go to before this, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a deleted scene cut. So they go upstairs uh, in the church with their guns drawn and they see someone hiding behind a stained glass window that's like inside the church. And Sam calls out and says, Anna, you know, my name is Sam. And she's like, not Sam Winchester. And they're like, huh? So then she comes out and says, and you're Dean, the Dean. And he's like, oh, oh, <laughs> <That's right>. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the only way to answer that is, yep. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> yes, the Dean. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Uh, she says that the angels have been talking about sam and dean and she basically knows everything about them she says some angels don't like sam at all <laughs> and then uh she's <laughs> talking sam. about it and just says that she overhears the angels she's not actually talking to them and she says that the whispering started september 18th the day that dean got out of hell and the first words she heard were dean winchester is saved dang what yeah Mm, Uh, and dean's like oh well the demons want you so bad because that means if they have you they can hear everything the angels are saying and doing so then she asks if her parents are okay she's like i just had to leave i didn't have time to check but then ruby busts in and freaks anna out because anna can see her face and see that she's a (laughs) demon but then they're like no she's okay yeah she goes from being she goes from being so relieved when like when Dean kind of acts yeah. like he believes her and you know he doesn't think that she's crazy. She feels so relieved. And then Ruby busts <laughs> in and she's like, holy shit. What's yeah, going I really on? liked that moment because he says something like, Oh, well, you're not hearing voices, you're just tuning into Angel Radio. And she's like, Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like she's been waiting for however many months now for somebody yeah. to to take her seriously and to not treat her like she's crazy. And suddenly Dean Winchester just did. And it's like the weight of the world just lifted off of her. There's the small manner of her parents yeah. that they're just going to not answer for now. But at least there's one thing that's better. Moment, you know, one thing at a time. Yeah, I think yeah. it might distract her a little bit too much. But it's, it's sweet because Dean <laughs> yeah. actually like makes her laugh. I forgot what he says but in that moment. But it, it's just it's just what she needs, you know, in this moment. Um, and that's, Mm -hmm. we usually don't see Dean being too good with, uh, people. Yeah. (laughs) He's kind of an asshole. He's a little surprised at himself. Like, oh, (laughs) right. She took that well. She hit him with that the (laughs) Dean. So he was like, no, I gotta be cool, right? (laughs) Flattery will get you everywhere. (laughs) Obviously she's into me, so I have to be nice. (laughs) Right. And can I just say, I love this set for some reason. It seems like it's very unique looking. I don't know if they were actually on a location somewhere. It's just a little attic in a church somewhere. But we have that stained glass in the background. Oh, yeah. and I just think it looks that really good. Cost some pretty pennies just to have, and then have them break mm-hmm. break it, like <laughs> Batman out of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, it was a neat set, though. Um, so Ruby tries to get them all to leave. She says a really big bad demon is about to show up. Um, But then they're arguing over it because Dean still doesn't trust her and it's too late. They look over and a statue of Mary is crying blood and it's badass. 
This is the most strong <laughs> thing I think we ever see on Supernatural. And it's amazing. Yeah. I loved this. I completely forgot that this happened. Yeah. We don't see a lot of stuff like this. It's just so, it's so dark. It's like, it's yeah. a great it's horror really movie. really cool. Yeah, Kristen loved it. And it's interesting it. that uh, Ruby, like the presence of Ruby didn't make the statue do this. It's just because a higher level demon is coming up. So, I mean... That kind of shows us uh, that puts more fear into us that oh shit what the hell is coming right there's also a line that ruby has in here uh when she her and dean are arguing and she says now is not the time to whine about sam going dark side <laughs> um which really implies to me that like sam has been practicing that dark side speech that he gave dean way back when oh, and he's just now repeating it to ruby yeah. like <laughs> Do they just That's want me true. to go dark? Like, I, he's probably just telling, like, it's probably on a live journal somewhere that he's writing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he's looking for Dean while Dean was in hell. Like, he just must use that dark side line a whole lot for Ruby to be, like, clued into it. Yeah. He, it, it was very effective when he used it against Dean. So he absolutely kept oh, yeah. that one of the bank for the next person who would listen. Of course, he's going to use it. Of his course. Cool and Ruby was probably girl. in the moment, like, what, what do you mean by dark side? He's like, you know, Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's, it's not as yeah. good if I have to explain it. <laughs> now it's ruined. Yeah. Man, a Sam live journal. I would read the shit out of that. <laughs> I'd kill for it. I'd In season it. one, I did create a, a MySpace for Sam. Yeah. Like, Kristen what would, made like what a faux Sam's... MySpace page. Oh my god. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> that was we awesome. need to, that's we beautiful. Need links on that, please. Please tell me that's still floating around the interweb somewhere. We need to dig it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely we should expand upon that. Feel free to add some picks. Oh, yeah, I'll add. Uh, the Suggest a new totally. song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll, we'll pair that with uh, Chris's John Winchester fanfic that we occasionally bring out on the show, and I'm sure it'll be just perfect. Oh my god! <laughs> you sound embarrassed. I'm really actually like intrigued. <laughs> it's a whole thing. <laughs> it's, it's a whole situation. I'll, t- I'll see if I can find a link somewhere. We <laughs> read some of the <laughs> we read some of the supernatural comic books, and they're insane. Oh, yeah. So, oh, that's awesome. the, yeah, yeah. Okay, origin looking forward to it. comics or mm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's just John Winchester being an absolute unhinged <laughs> lunatic for you know 25 pages it's or whatever so however wild nice i mean it's just yeah it's de- if y'all are looking for like more stuff to cover that's crazy supernatural stuff the comic books are a rich vein of material yeah, yeah. potentially for yes. some patreon content yeah um so yeah they're kind of screwed mary's crying blood uh and they get into position embrace for the demon and um this is when ruby gives that line like dean knock it off like he needs to sam needs to use his powers to get rid of this demon otherwise we're gonna die Mm -hmm. um the demon breaks the door down and walks in and this is um mark ralston and sam tries exercising him with his powers but he just looks up at sam with white eyes and says that tickles (laughs) Uh uh-oh creep so he yeah he grabs sam with his powers and throws him downstairs Dean then attacks the demon with the demon blade. And meanwhile, Ruby grabs Anna and escapes. The Dean demon is talking to Dean while beating him up and says, don't you recognize me? Oh, I forgot. I'm wearing a pediatrician, but we were so close in hell. I love that line. <laughs> yeah. I'm wearing a pediatrician. So yeah. yeah. It's fucked up. This dude is, is I really like this B2, guy's whole yeah. vibe, He's like yeah. my second favorite demon that we've seen on the show so far for, since uh, Yellow Eyes. Like he's just, he's a perfect amount of like creepy and threatening at the same time. Yeah. He's super threatening. I would say actually more so than Yellow Eyes at some points because I was like scared about like by all the talk of Yellow Eyes Azazel. Yeah. But then when we met him, I was kind of like, mm, okay. You know, he, he was, didn't he wasn't that threatening. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Um, this guy is like literally he's physically imposing he just tossed the boys aside like they were nothing yeah and he's wearing a pediatrician which is just he's wearing a pediatrician yeah. what's scarier than yeah that? that's just like deeply fucked up yeah. uh and then dean goes <laughs> alistair so then sam attacks alistair with the demon blade and it does nothing he stabs him in the chest and it's just chilling there yeah. And Alistair pulls the blade out of his chest and Sam and Dean jump through the stained glass window. And Alistair just lets them go. <laughs> With, without no. even a second thought, they're like, yeah, this, <laughs> that's, this is what we have to do. 
I have it in my notes that they decide in a glance and I'm distinctly remember them like looking at each other and having that like Winchester brother moment of like jump out the window. Yeah, let's go. Okay. And then just doing it. Yeah, that's what I was. I've shared yeah. that glance with that <laughs> meaning before. And I don't recall, did they try to stab Lilith with that demon knife? They or they never got too close. They when? never got close enough. I don't think they've I don't think they've had the opportunity to to stab Lilith yet. Just because well, I, I I could be wrong though. No, you're right. Yeah. I think you're right about that. What do you yeah, when do you mean? Um, well, just because, like, I see Alistair as, like, uh, at the same level as Lilith, possibly, because he has the wide eyes, just like her. So, she, you know, they're at that level. So they kind of know. Mm, they yeah. they went after Lilith, I think, in the season finale with the demon knife. So that that means that would have been completely useless then. I mean, it doesn't mean that, but we can assume that because well, that they're kind of maybe at the mm, same level. I know that in a later scene when Sam... Well, no, never mind. That's actually in the past because it's a flashback. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, Sam. Maybe it was just a glancing blow on Alistair. It didn't, didn't quite get yeah, deep maybe. enough. Hit bone didn't before hit it hit anything right. important. I don't know how demons work. <laughs> I don't know either. In any way we want to is the answer to that question usually. <laughs> That's a yeah. good answer usually. So, and and sorry, I guess the ahead. important part of this is that they they jump out of the window, but they leave the knife behind, right? Like they don't have this right. knife anymore. They left it in Alistair. So um, yeah, like that's that's kind of a boneheaded move, guys. Like grab that knife. It's pretty important. I know. <laughs> you only got the one. I guess yeah. maybe the writers felt like, you know, this knife is just kind of fucking up our shit. It's just like a Marauder map moment of Harry Potter, you know, like they had to get rid of the Marauder's map. Or J.K. Rowling did because it it was just too much power. <laughs> right, you gotta strip these boys down again and take away their only defense. And now even the though stakes like are we, we already high. raised the stakes with the six hundred seals, like we already did that. That's, that's that is true. Very true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and what is a demon blade against six hundred possible seals? I don't know. So they escape. Batman through the window. Uh, back at a motel, Dean has dislocated his shoulder, and Sam is sewing up a gash on his arm. He's like fucking Jason Borning himself, <laughs> and is so intense yeah. about it. I don't think and, we've seen him like this since Mystery Spot. Like, yeah, when he went all Hungry Man and is all badass, and I think he's sewing himself up there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's done it once before, but. Yeah, this is some <laughs> hunky shit right here. There's nothing more masculine for some reason in media than men being incredibly <laughs> injured. There's just they're always doing it. And you know, I don't understand it. I don't understand the psychology of it, but these like they're they just seem real beefy. Yeah, you know same. I mean? <laughs> Especially the uh the whiskey over the open wound. Like that's that's a very like I, I'm I, I drive a motorcycle now. That's what I was like, gonna I just, say. <laughs> like he's yeah. like drinking it first, and then he's like, here, give me that, and then just pours it on his wound, and it's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. i also like this like chris mentioned this earlier seeing the boys just in the life um whether it's you know hustling pool or like, actually having to repair their injuries like i, I really enjoy the, the, these tiny moments that we get from because it's not it's not just them being superheroes basically which is a lot of the show uh which i don't mind like i'm, I'm here for my hunky super bros but I, I also like them like having to you know stitch themselves up or having to pop a shoulder back in right. after it's been dislocated like that 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 toll that it takes on these boys is, is always interesting to me yeah like how do they deal with that um so then sam gets up and pops dean's shoulder back into place they're just a mess a hot mess <laughs> <laughs> in like two senses of the word <laughs> so then dean asks if sam's sure about ruby he's still does not trust her and he says that he thinks that ruby may have used them to get to anna and just escape with her but sam's not budging um he tells dean that he thinks alistair let them go so that he could follow them and dean's like this is letting us go and he's like yeah he's probably watching us right now so we have to just wait for ruby to contact us and so dean's like you know i don't get it i'm not trying to pick a fight but i need to know more i deserve to know more and sam says that she saved his life. And then we get flashbacks. So flashback to six months earlier. Uh, Sam returns to some motel room and he looks like shit. His eyes oh, are puffy. Yeah. He's clearly been drinking. He's all kinds of sad. Clearly been crying. Is, are we 
He was definitely, yeah, he's definitely crying. Been crying. Or is this directly after the yeah. botched demon crossword demon deal? Like I, I feel it like it seems like it like... is. I assumed so. Yeah. Yeah. The mascara, you can still see the, the streaks of mascara down <laughs> right. his eyes. So I think it is the same the same night. <laughs> he ruined his Robert Smith shirt, Chris. Can you believe this? <laughs> yeah, again. Like another another shirt down. <laughs> Gonna have it's to go like back to Hot Topic. Original Smith tees that you can get from Hot Topic. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, so he walks into the room and he's ambushed by two demons. Uh, there's a man and a woman demon and the woman grabs the demon blade from Sam and he immediately knows it's Ruby and calls her out. But she's in a different body. She says that Lilith gave her another chance to come back from hell and all she had to do was find Sam and kill him. She raises the knife and turns and stabs the other demon she's with instead of Sam. Psych. And then she's like, <laughs> she's like, we got to go now. Grab your keys. So then in the Impala, they're both driving along and Ruby's in a good mood. She's craving French fries. And she's like, what? I just got out of hell. I deserve a treat. Um, and Sam's just not in the mood. He's just like, what are you doing here? Nobody asked you to save me. Um, she says that she had to go through a lot to convince Lilith that she was sorry and to get back to Sam. She says she's a fugitive for him, uh, which is really mm. like there's a lot of devotion there already, right? Like, does she have like demon feelings for Sam before now? I don't know. I don't know either. But you know that Sam's going to start eating that <laughs> up real quick. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a satanic monster into me or oh, or okay. Jerry? Yeah. Okay. I mean, why not? Fully in. Yeah, season three Ruby wasn't as like forward with her with her devotion. Absolutely. Like she was mm -hmm. more like, no, you're a dumbass and I'm helping you kind mm -hmm. of. And attitude. you're welcome. Yes, exactly. But here it's completely different. It's like, no, I I need to get to his heart, I guess. Well Yeah. And maybe now because Sam is alone. Um, he doesn't have Dean. She knows that he's grieving and she can either um, take advantage of that or just sort of like help heal that. However you want to look at it. There's there's an opening now that wasn't there before necessarily. Um, you know, it's not Sam and Dean with a demon. It's just Sam. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's an opportunity, maybe. So Sam's like, who asked you to save me? And then he asks if she can save Dean. And she says, no, there's nothing I know of that's powerful enough to do that. So Sam hits the brakes, stops the car, and then tells her to get out. He's like, whose body are you riding right now, Ruby? And she's like, you never cared about that before. Why are you asking me now? And he's like, yeah, point, <laughs> I mean, it is kind of a good point. <laughs> and he's like, because I care. Let her go or I'll send you back to hell. So then we cut to Ruby's old body, which is Genevieve, in a hospital bed, and the doctor says to pull it, and she flatlines. Suddenly she gasps and sits up in bed, and the flatline beeping is still going. <laughs> and she says, who do I have to kill to get some french fries around here? Oh, I love this. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's how you know it's Ruby. Yeah. She loves her friends. Girl, I get it. Good. I remember seeing this the first time, and I just thought, this is really creative. Like I, I really enjoyed that they went this way and that we, it's, it's interesting though. Like she says later on that, um, you know, she explains the spirit is gone. The apartment's empty essentially. And I mean, that's an interesting way to look at it and kind of in a dark way, um, mm -hmm. that this woman who's in a vegetative state can be totally, uh, taken over by a demon and there's no, you know, there's no other person in there that's being pushed right you know deeper in right they're not being hurt right and i think it they they i think they probably needed to to kind of find some solution to avoid any kind of icky consent issues with ruby where she's supposed to you know she's on she's on the side of good so they don't want to they don't want to have it be anything that's yes. that's too gross going forward because we kind of saw this happen with Meg a couple seasons ago yes. with this poor girl as we find out was just dragged through all of this horror and then afterwards they're like oh my god there was a real girl in there this is awful yeah. so if we want to look at Ruby like as one of the team um, then we want her to just be Ruby in just an empty body and no other person is suffering mm -hmm. because of this also she's going to be boning down with Sam yeah spoilers yeah. for yeah, ten yeah. Minutes from now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean to your point uh, with consent like yeah what if 
I, I don't think it would have gone down very well with the audience if that's what I was gonna say. Like as a viewer, I would have had more of a, much more of a problem with it, and it wouldn't have felt right, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Supernatural doesn't have a a great track record with the way that it it deals with consent issues or women in general, <laughs> like just any woman that appears on the show ever. So, like at least having this um, kind of hand wavy, like oh she was in a coma and I just have her body da- now is 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 really fine by me. Um, yeah, it's I, something they're throwing us a consent bone, and I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> the consent, you know, bone. just oh my gosh, <laughs> that's the second worst Tinder date I ever. Had. <laughs> um, yeah, oh God. Um, it's all- <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a. This was what two thousand five, or no? This was what two thousand nine. Like yeah. So even even then, it was something like that. It's still they're still learning. TV was different, and it's and true. we're yeah. still building. And Supernatural, I imagine, is still growing and still getting better. And and the audience is is probably very receptive. Yeah, to for that. sure. And it's also like it, there's a certain point in Supernatural where you just have to give up on like the moral rightness of the of these dudes who like murder a bunch of possessed people constantly <laughs> like i mean it's like i like um, and by the time we like you catch up to where our show is in season nine it's just like oh they killed some demons and those were obviously like people that the demons had possessed and like r.i.p those those people's families i guess but the show is not going to deal with any of the emotional weight of that because who cares it's a tv show so yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um so then we cut to Sam squatting at some disgusting abandoned house. I don't know where the fuck he found this place. I don't know. <laughs> it's really This cool. is Bobby's uh, fourth floor that he hasn't cleaned in a while. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like his back <laughs> house on the other three house. acres he owns or whatever. Yeah. Um, this is another set that I really like just because it's unique. You know, we see like some greenery outside of yeah, Sam's Yeah, there's like ivy windows. growing I don't inside know. and stuff. It's weird. This place, like, it's got to be filled with rats and, and, and homeless people. It's not a safe building to be in, I bet. Yeah. So Sam's staying on the first floor for condemned. sure. Um, but I'm really surprised she doesn't run into a group condemned. of teens just hanging out in this place. Yeah, <laughs> smoking weed in a corner. Keep trying to, like, yeah. smoke pot. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Spray painting. They're like, oh, shit, that giant is still in there. We're going to leave. Yeah, I don't know where he found this place, but uh, all right. We're, we're rolling with it. Uh, and then there's a knock at the door. He goes over and answers the door and it's Ruby and she holds up a piece of paper and she's like proof that this body is not being used. I'm recycling and Al Gore would be proud. Uh, I looked it up and Inconvenient Truth came out three years before in 2006. So it was still pretty fresh in everybody's mind. All right. (laughs) Sick Gore reference. Right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So uh, she tells Sam that she can't bring Dean back, but she can help him get Lilith. He's totally ready. He's chomping at the bit. And she's like, okay, slow down, cowboy. Um, yeah, he doesn't hesitate no. for even a second. He's like, oh, yeah, no, for sure. Do you want me to take my shirt off now or later? <laughs> Let's fucking do it. And she, she's like, I didn't mention that at all, but okay. And she's like, okay, we really got to get it right this time. Do you want to do this half-ass or, or do you really want to get it right and take care of her? So he's like, well, what do you need me to do? And she's like, I need you to be patient. And I need some sobriety. (laughs) So maybe stop drinking so much. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Then we get into him being taught by Ruby of how to use his powers. We get flashbacks of them holding a demon in a devil's trap at the house. And Sam is practicing using his powers. He has a really hard time and isn't able to pull the demon out of the body. And the demon laughs at him and Ruby just stabs it with a demon blade. And she's like, not funny. Yeah, I I don't like that we didn't get a chance to see like what is what exactly is Ruby telling him to do? Like, what is she instructing yeah. him on how to use his powers? They kind of skip over that point. Um, it's just straight to training. But like, what exactly is he? Yeah, like what is concentrating he concentrating to tap on? into? Mm-hmm. I would have liked. Yeah, where's our where's our Yoda moment? Because that's what I need. Ruby yeah <laughs> or is this like a patronus moment like your happiest thought yeah exactly sure. <laughs> you know i never i never seen uh ruby as the the lupin of this story <laughs> but you know in some ways <laughs> she kind of is if lupin were really hot it's it works <laughs> yeah so then we cut to another scene where ruby is telling sam to give it time he's just super beat up he's obviously still kind of drinking and sad yeah. And um, also he definitely has watery eyes here. Definitely. Yeah, here's another misty eyes. Also, he definitely has a tight V neck t-shirt and it's like really 
yeah. a good look. And Ruby yeah. totally gives him like a up and down look. Like she's already <laughs> checking that. him out. Like, okay, he got to glow up. Man, the she's so the bad. chemistry between Genevieve and and Jared on set. Like, you, from the moment that she like appears in the show, you're like, oh yeah, those those two are gonna bone down if not get married and live for the rest of their lives very happily. <laughs> and guess what yeah, happens? We're gonna have a bunch of kids together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's hot. those two people are gonna have a bunch of giant babies. Is what's going to giant happen. beautiful babies, <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. And it's so true; it really does come through on screen. Like they have great chemistry, which is why this works so well. I think. Like if it had been a different actress or like the previous Ruby, it just would have been so awkward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I bet they're thankful. That it works <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> So she's just. I wonder if they tell everybody, like all of their couple friends, that their first time was on Supernatural. Like, that's the first time you. you get, oh yeah, definitely. It was definitely on season four, episode nine. Yeah, you can watch our first kiss. <laughs> oh, yeah. I... we made the rest of the crew leave. Everybody get out. Yeah, that is that is true. That is their first kiss. I bet. Wow, I that's kind of so. that's kind of weird. Although maybe right? they were dating before now. Yeah, maybe know. I'm not sure. Well, no, so I need more I need more information. Yeah, so Ruby's just telling Sam to give it time and that it'll get better. He picks up a liquor bottle and says, what, I need more practice? But Ruby's talking about his pain at Dean being gone. Sam gets pissed about it and doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, Ruby says that she still remembers what it feels like to lose someone and she's sorry. And she's really trying to talk to him about it. And then she gets close to him and says, Sam, you're not alone. And then kisses him. What? Mm -hmm. What? This is insane. Um, So he has kind of like an understandable reaction. He pushes her off and seems really confused. He's like, what are you doing? And gets really pissed. And she's like, what? It's okay. And he's like, no, no, no. This is anything but okay. (laughs) (laughs) Like, this is the first monster that you've hooked up with, Sam. Remember the werewolf? Come on. It's true. Talk about heart. You've done this before. Yeah. Yeah. We've, We've had some werewolf. Anyway. But it's also interesting and we've had- that she her reaction Go is, um, I, I understand how it is to be lonely. Like what you really need right now is to get fucked. Like that's right. <laughs> Why is that the hard <laughs> cure for it? <laughs> well, Sam's bleeding heart is just eating that right up. Um, but this is this is the first time that we've had any indication of there being kind of a romance between them, whether it's just physical or, or something more. Right? Like throughout the rest of the season when them sneaking off together, that's just yeah. been about like Dean No, I always we suspected any honestly from like, okay, when Dean came back from hell and found them in that apartment and she was in her underwear. <laughs> oh, true. I was like, did yeah. they know yeah. that he was oh, gonna yeah. show yeah. up? And then they set up this scene to be like she's, you know, just some girl he's banging, or were they actually banging? Yeah. Oh man, I you know, I thought I thought Sam was twisted before, but if he's actually going out of his way to set up like a sex my brother catches me having sex moment, like <laughs> Jesus Christ, Sam. Sam, please, what are you doing? He's got issues. Well, now man. we know the truth, which is that they were just for real banging and he they were just caught off guard and she was in her undies. Yeah, so they had crazy. just yeah. done it like the night before, before Dean showed up, basically. Yeah. We can track that. The night before? You don't know how long ago it was. <laughs> <laughs> the morning of true, they just ended Sam like looks five like he just ago. got out of the shower yeah, in that scene that's true that's true <laughs> oh man so yeah is this it, it's hard for me to remember is this the first time that we get an inclination that um demons were humans before as well because she specifically says no, like oh i, I was a was human and i remember it was before this okay i could yeah I can't, it was I can't before this like this show, so. <laughs> yeah there was um uh, that episode malleus maleficarum where they were talking like there were some witches and oh, ruby had yeah, talked okay, about gotcha. when she was a human and was like i don't know owned by that other demon or whatever or which mm-hmm. i don't i don't remember yeah so yeah sam's really upset about all of this um but then she just keeps seducing him she takes her jacket off and comes closer and says like what's wrong is it this body and he's like He's trying really hard to fight her off. I'll give him some points for this. He tries his best. Uh, but then she acknowledges the demon weirdness <laughs> by saying, <laughs> you can't do Christine, it. you need to say it. Say it. <laughs> okay. Is it because you're scared to go there with a demon? Because it's bad and it's wrong and we shouldn't? <laughs> 
And Sam has never wanted to hear anything more of his life. Than those words, apparently. <laughs> and so then that just Sam was like, I was ready to bone down with that demon in the airplane in season one. Y'all, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting. Yeah, it just really pushes him over the edge, and he just goes for it. Um, and then they start making out. Okay, and I'm sorry, I have to acknowledge like how he picks her up. This is just like the hottest. It's a powerful move. Yes. Damn. Yeah, it's right. so good. I mean, if one of you didn't say it, I was going to bring okay, it up because it's you know. Wait, but he's flexing those arms. He's putting yeah. them. Yeah, the most important thing that she says. Oh my she god, she says you, you're going to have to say it. It's all me inside of here, and it's nice inside this body, <laughs> Sam. I know. That's right, <laughs> and soft and warm, also. Oh also, my yeah. god, she goes there. So I mean, what is he going to do with that? He he can't do anything else. Like, <sighs> yeah, no. Yeah, and they do the very best thing in this moment. And of course, we we see some 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 hot makeout action, and things get a little bit you know clothes get tossed to the floor, and then immediately cut to Dean in present day being like, "Dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why are you why telling? Why are you giving me this much detail, my man? Why are you describing your rippling muscles to me?" <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Sam was definitely describing the way his biceps looked as he picked her up. He's like, I don't need to know, dude. Yeah, I've, not only have I seen your biceps before, I never want to see them again. So please move on. <laughs> it was so awesome. I loved his face. But like, this is really interesting. I, I, I think Ruby is doing this primarily to please Sam and to kind of get him out of his depression. But well, because like, can demons feel like, do they feel horny? Do they actually feel any sort of sexuality at all? Because they don't feel pain, right? I mean, right. Have I we? Know. I think they've made references to like when the seven deadly sins came up in season three. I know. I mean, I know lust is one of them. I don't know if that really is something that affects most demons, but those that group seemed to really be into like carnal vices, smoking, drinking. When Sam was possessed by a demon in, I think, season two, he they talk about how he's smoking all these cigarettes or whatever. It's demons just want to live fast and die young. Yeah. You know? Well, and I'm going to give a couple of examples. I think of two, like when Lilith takes over Ruby's old body and then she seems to like kind of get off on it. And she's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah now I'm in like a. Sam. Yeah. She's like, oh, I'm not a nine year old girl anymore. I'm in a sexy like woman's body mm -hmm. um and then also there was that demon who dean was like trapped in that basement with when she was in the devil's trap and he was trapped oh, yeah. in the basement with her oh, yeah. but she was pretty sexy too she was all horned up too right yeah, absolutely yeah that's true and also lilith really liked her ice cream so i guess <laughs> really that's, into that. sorry, that's a carnal same pleasure level. right yeah, absolutely okay same yeah. level yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> Anyone who's is ever had ice cream can tell you, if not greater than. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Also notable is that Ruby apparently doesn't wear a bra. Oh, that's true. Demons don't eat them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, true. it's fat. Simple fact. They yeah. just go straight from t-shirt to to nothing underneath. Like there's no there's yes, no bra. So. <laughs> just wanted to note that. If that leather jacket is supporting enough, I think. Oh, it's just really hot, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's hot all, in Sam's yeah. weird bungalow that he lives in. <laughs> all demons have some sort of like weird telekinetic power, right? Because they're always throwing Sam and Dean around into walls and shit. So, like, presumably, like they could just use the TK power to keep them up, right? Like that's the, that's an easy sell. <laughs> that's true. I guess so. Maybe, maybe that's what's happening. That's not fair. Are you guys glad you had us on for this episode? <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> this is a perfect. <laughs> we wanted to get the male perspective. I mean, there's so few. Here it yeah, is. Yeah, we never get the male perspective ever in the world. So we, we needed it. Finally, two guys on a podcast. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's not fair. I, we should all have that power. Um. So... Then the scene cuts to Dean. He's staring at him like, um, oh, okay. Spare me. And and then he says, now I feel dirty. <laughs> uh, and Sam's like, okay, sorry. Um, so after that, uh, and then he just skips the whole rest of the sex scene. Fine, whatever. <laughs> and Christine, I'm, I'm curious, as, as somebody who's not um, seen 
all of the future episodes. Like, are you into this? Like, are you are you worried that Sam? This is another like Sam going dark side moment. Like, where where are you at with this this relationship? Because I remember w- watching this when it was coming on, going like, oh no, like they are completely corrupting my boy Sam, and like he wasn't wasn't exactly great to begin with. So like, this is just going to get bad for him. You know, I kind of I was totally for it. Really. <laughs> I kind of weirdly <laughs> trust Ruby. Like, I still don't know what her angle is. I I know there's got to be something else there. Like, I am I understand where Dean's coming from because everything that Ruby's done, the sacrifices that she's made, and all the lengths that she's gone to to help them don't necessarily add up for me. Like, what is she getting out of it? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I still like weirdly trust her and um. And I'm all for Sam having some support because he really doesn't, she's offering him a lot of what he doesn't get in his life otherwise. Like emotional support, mm-hmm. Dean's not the, the best talker, right? When Dean's around, like they don't, <laughs> they don't have like really deep conversations that help him emotionally. Um, and then obviously now they have a physical relationship and that's cool for Sam too. Like he's really been torn up ever since Jess and then the woman from Heart um and he's just had a bad run of it so yeah as someone who doesn't know what else is coming i'm still totally into it because i want that for sam you know what i mean yeah i was always on uh team ruby um because same that's like that's exactly how i felt yeah i, I mean think i was I just the same on my her. first on my first watch because i mean i i come from buffy and angel where like but you know buffy doing angel is such a big deal because he's you know the complete antithesis of what she is so that was like, also awesome mm-hmm. yeah so <laughs> i mean i like you know sam getting into it with something supernatural it's it's kind of hot and you know it was on buffy as well yeah mm-hmm. yeah i was trying to be deep about it but if you want to just be real surface level like it's hot then <laughs> it's hot it's just hot <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely it's 2019. Everybody wants to fuck monsters nowadays. And so let's just lean into it. And accept <laughs> exactly. It. <laughs> so then Sam tells Dean that he was finding signs that Lilith was in town. Um, so in the flashback, Ruby's trying to stop Sam from going after Lilith because they're not ready. But Sam won't listen. And he's just on a tear. Uh, she calls him out and she's like, oh, this is a kamikaze attack. I get it. You want to die fighting Lilith. And he's like, that's stupid. And she's like, no, it's the truth. Uh, If you kill Lilith, then it means you have to go on living without Dean, basically. And she's like, this isn't what Dean wanted. It's not what he died for. And then she gets in his way um, in front of the door and she won't move. So Sam pushes her up against the wall and presses the demon blade to her neck and is like threatening her, which is kind of fucked up after what they've been through i would i would say but Mm -hmm. um yeah after everything he's still willing to sacrifice literally anything because he's so torn up about dean even after all the support that he's seemingly gotten from her at the end of the day he's still a winchester yeah totally like what does that tell you about where he's at still so she gets it and she just kind of lets it go and he leaves um then it looks like there's like a commercial break. I don't know if you'll watch the same Netflix version I did, but it looks like commercial break comes back. And then at the bottom it says five months earlier. So I guess it's been a month since he met Ruby. Um, and he's walking down the sidewalk and walks up to a house and looks to the window and sees Lilith sitting with her back to him at the dinner table. He quietly lets himself into the house and goes up to the little girl with the demon blade pulled out. But she turns around and it's a different girl and she's like crying and she just says, please, I want to go home. And then Sam's so dumb. I know. <laughs> Fuck, where'd this little girl come from? They're using her as bait. <laughs> yeah. I know. And I love that the it's trash wild. shows that Lilith is sitting in front of like a table full of dessert. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> that's supposed to be believable. She's with her yeah. treats. Yeah. Just hanging out with my desserts. Uh, Then Sam's ambushed by demons and they say that Lilith's not even there. And then Ruby suddenly shows up. She grabs the demon blade and kills the demon that's holding Sam. He grabs a little girl and escapes with her. And Ruby tries fighting this demon, but she proceeds to just get her ass kicked. Um, He slams her up against a wall and has his hand on her neck. And she's lost the demon blade and it's on the floor. 
And then suddenly Sam shows up. Well, this is pretty good too, though, because the demon's telling Ruby, um, you know, you're basically in deep shit. We're going to take you. <laughs> He's like, we're going to take you down to the basement and like all the things we're going to do to you. He's like threatening her. And then Sam shows up and he starts exercising the demon from the body. And he does it. And I assume this is the first time he's able to actually achieve that. Yeah, it seems that way. So that was interesting because it was like he finally had the motivation to do it because Ruby was being threatened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Yeah, this this is a classic like superhero or anyone with superpower kind of moment of like, oh, I like something had to click and now I can now I can figure out how to shoot my eye beams correctly instead of just blowing a hole in the right. top of the yeah. school. Um, I like this a lot. Like I I love badass Sam having crazy cool demon powers. Like this is the the coolest shit in the world to me. <laughs> it is really cool. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it, I was surprised though, because I it only took a month then that means for them to figure it out, for Sam to like really hone in on his power. But we have like three months to, so what, you know, or we don't four. get, yeah, yeah, we don't get the other, uh, yeah, what'd of, you do the rest of the time? Samuel does hole up in a motel room and phone. just did like, yeah, he did push ups and like, exercise demons and <laughs> made out with Ruby. Yeah, and fucked Ruby. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Um, understandable. I mean, you know, trying to figure out your shit. So then we cut back to Sam and Dean um, in present day. And Sam says that Ruby came back and saved him. Um, and that what she had told him was exactly what Dean would have said too. And he was like, you know, what she said to me, that's what you would have said. And I wouldn't be here if it weren't for her. And then we hear a knock on the door and a lady calls for housekeeping. Dean's like, not right now. And she's like, sir, I have towels. And he's like, oh, fine. Goes over and opens the door. She just pushes past him, this big black lady, puts towels in his arms, and <laughs> gives Sam a I piece of I mean, she of- did have towels. Yeah, she was yeah, alive. <laughs> and she gives Sam a piece of paper saying, I'm at this address. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Sam's getting down. booty calls now. <laughs> That's so awesome. And so he seems very confused, but she just quickly tells him to get a move on. She's like, don't stop for anything. Uh, He's like, Ruby? And she's like, yeah, I possess this body for a hot minute. What? And she says that Coma Girl is slowly rotting on the floor of the house that she's at. So she has to leave. Um, So that that always (laughs) that always brought up an interesting interesting question to me, because if she possessed this body at the point of death, if she's not currently possessing it, is it slowly rotting? And is that super gross to talk about on a podcast? Well, we have to explore all possibilities. (laughs) Okay, cool. Does that mean that Sam had sex with a dead body, technically? That's kind of going with this. That's exactly right. Is this is this is it dead if it has a soul? I mean, a demon is a bad soul, but it's kind of a soul, right? Is it a soul? I don't know. It's just evil. There's I mean, I mean it's a, it's a, it has a personality. I mean, but we're talking about the physical human being, soul. right? The physicality right. of yeah. it. I mean I think the only reason it would super gross me out is if the body were still like rotting while the demon was in it. But it seems like that's not the case. Ooh, and she does say it's yeah, warm. They, so <laughs> she does say yeah. it's yeah. warm. That's our evidence warm right there. Cozy or something. Right. <laughs> you know. It has blood in its body. That's a is yeah, that's it's alive kind of yeah, yeah like she's making it live by, yeah. by being in it I, I wonder when she's if she's not hanging out with sam she just like stops the heart from beating because it takes too much effort but when she's around <laughs> sam she's like gotta get that blood pumping so he, get it going. he thinks that i'm a live person oh shit right. gotta act alive <laughs> right my favorite read on this scene regardless of necrophilia is i just really like imagining that the the housekeeper is outside the door listening to sam's dramatic retelling of his uh, <laughs> encounter so she busts in and she's like i'm at this address i'll see you later yeah <laughs> you need to come find me now yeah. we got things to talk i about love that do. idea <laughs> uh, but no it's just ruby <laughs> oh that's very funny uh so yeah the, the housekeeping lady leaves and they both just look at each other like what the fuck <laughs> so then sam and dean show up at this barn abandoned house 
guess you could call it a barn. It's a place. Yeah. Barn. Yeah. I, I don't know what this place is. Does this Apparently place it has really an have an address? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> They definitely did not put this pull this up on like Google Maps. Like I can tell you that. Yeah, right he's now. like, can you drop a pin or something? I can't find this place. Yeah. Th- this is the place that you like point to. Is like it's after the three cows. <laughs> the when you yeah, see look them. for the big tree. Go left. Uh, so they go inside, and Anna and Ruby are in there, and Anna tells them that Ruby's not like other demons, and that she saved her life. And Dean's like, yeah. Uh, so I guess. Uh, <laughs> and he makes this like very painful apology to mm-hmm. Ruby. Um, that's he just, not even like, really... won't spit it out, and she, yeah, she gives him this look like, "What are you saying?" Even though she knows what he's saying, she's just, I just, I like to read it as her just like kind of being a dick to Dean because yeah. she's, she's like, "Yeah, you do owe me an apology," <laughs> and he still doesn't say it. He doesn't actually say sorry. It's no perfect. It's the most Dean apology of all time. It's beautiful. It's the best he's g- she's gonna it's, get. Yeah. Yeah yeah he's so awkward um but she basically accepts and then uh anna asks if she can make a quick call to her parents Ugh. so oh, sam's whoops. like yeah so about that and like sits down and starts like trying to break the news but she just understands and sam's like you know doing this very like gently and apologetically but she just completely breaks down she just starts sobbing and he comforts her the best that he can. Then she suddenly stops crying and gasps and sits up and says, they're coming. And they're like, okay, put Anna in the back room. They start preparing for battle. Ruby's looking through their bag of weapons, and she's pissed that the demon blade is missing. And this was kind of a funny moment because she's like, you you lost the demon blade? And Dean's like, not me. And Sam's like, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um. So then the door of the shack blows open and Castiel and Uriel walk through the door. Whoops. Yeah, Castiel doesn't know how to open a door, clearly. Because he's just... <laughs> no. He makes the exact same entrance that Alistair made earlier in the episode. It's very dramatic. And I even up until the point where they walk through the door, I was like, oh, shit, is it Alistair? Like, oh, it's sweet boy Castiel. What is he doing here? <laughs> right. Why does he look so angry? <laughs> Angels don't understand computers or doorknobs. That's no. canon within the within the show. <laughs> <laughs> they just have to bust it open whenever they walk into it. That's room. good to know. That's yeah, consistent with what I've seen so far. <laughs> um so then Ruby shows her black eyes to Castiel and Uriel, and Dean asks them for help. He's like, I hope you guys are here to help us because we've got this girl on our hands. And we've got demon problems. And Uriel's like, yeah, I can see that. Do you want to explain why there's this stain in the room? He's such a dick. Yeah. He He's is. like, hey, don't talk about Sam like that, all right? <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so then Castiel says that they're here for Anna. And Sam asks, are you going to help her? And Castiel says, no, she has to die. To be continued. Uh Oh, my God. I couldn't even believe that it ended there. I was watching I it. You know, I've seen this before, but I was like, wait, holy shit, that's it? They ended it there? Yeah, yeah. I didn't remember this was a to be continued at all. And she has to die. Fuck. Okay, but also, Castiel, haven't we kind of been through this already? You already tried to, like, wipe off an entire town off the map, and that didn't work out so good for you. Like, maybe not everybody has to die who you think has to die. I mean, just stop listening to Uriel. Like, that's probably, like, the easiest yeah. thing to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Castiel. <laughs> that dude has nothing but bad ideas. <laughs> like, he was like, let's... Let, let's 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 make the McRib just like an occasional thing. And, like, you know, oh, well, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. We should definitely shouldn't do that. I... The uh the, the angels just coming in and, and like for the last couple of episodes of just being like yeah we we just need to kill these humans for god reasons I guess is so hilarious to me like they're just like yeah we got to kill these people for reasons that aren't really clear to us either but we know we have to do it like what are you guys doing up there like you have you made 600 seals and you only have to break 60 yeah. of them and now this what yeah I really like the way that they kind of pitch the 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 angels as you know borderline evil you never really know what they're up to and uh it could be easy to either make them black or white but there's just so much uh, presence and they seem so powerful and so unnerving um especially in these early episodes you're like holy crap what is going on here and cassio is like yep we gotta kill her why we we're not gonna tell you until next episode but (laughs) yeah it's surprising though because at the end of um i think like two episodes ago cassio was already kind of 
I kind of revealed to Dean that he had some doubts about what mm -hmm. he was doing. So he's still struggling with that, I guess. And he's kind of just gotten, gone back to, okay, I'm just going to listen to what the specialist says, um, aka Uriel, and um, I'm just going to do my job. But what happened in between that time that he's just, he forgot about that? I don't know. He keeps know. caving to peer pressure. It's just like whoever he's hanging out with, you know? <laughs> Basically, yeah. He's, 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 very, he's very conflicted because I think, you know, he sees things in, in a lot of ways. He sees things the way that Dean sees them. But at the same time, he's, he's an angel and he's part of this institution. And he has this quest that maybe we don't know all the details of yet, but he, he's torn between these kind of these two halves of himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely does seem that way. Yeah. I don't know, man. He needs to start standing up to Uriel because I really can't stand that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a dick. Um, he's an absolute dick. That's a great yeah. way to put it. He's 100%. a dick. <laughs> There's no um, other way to put it. No. So uh, we do get it. two misty yeah. eyes mm -hmm. in this episode uh, by Sam, of course. No son of a bitches <laughs> right, from Dean. Unfortunately, oh. I really expected some son of a bitches, and you know, he he was pretty uh crazy, this, pretty angry. Yeah, yeah there were there were was definitely opportunity. Mm -hmm. He's too shell shocked from Sam's um you know kiss and tell moment that he uh he just I don't does, blame he doesn't him. even know what to do anymore. I'm still you shocked. Notice he's a little extra, a little extra pale in this episode because he's just still <laughs> reeling from all the details. I was a little bit surprised that he didn't react a little bit more to that. I mean, I guess there wasn't enough time. Ruby kind of interrupted them, but I expected him to just like. How funny would it have been if, like, while Sam was telling the story and we were in the flashback, like as soon as it started happening, it cut to him like freaking the fuck out. <laughs> Like what? <laughs> yeah. What are you telling me? You fucking And Sam's like, wait, wait, I got more, and it just goes back. <laughs> during during that whole scene, as they're as they're stripping each other down and getting all hot and heavy, I just want like Dean's head in the co top left corner and just increasingly <laughs> like getting more and more disturbed as it happened, like a reaction video. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like just going. Uh, 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 no, no. That, that would have been great. awesome, like a reality show. Like uh. this is his reaction. <laughs> Yes, yeah. it's Dean's YouTube channel, and this is his reaction to <laughs> yeah. Sam's oh, story. That's so funny. That would have been great. No, yeah, so he kind of took it pretty well, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially since he still, you know, was kind of struggling with his feelings of even trusting her at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it came out, you know, kind of came out of nowhere, so. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it for the episode. Do we want to talk about where we were thinking about putting this in our ranking. Yeah. So we do rank, or we're trying to rank every single yeah. episode mm. as we go along. It's, this seems like such a huge project. Yeah, I, that I love really that you guys do this. With. It just seems yeah. like we would never be able to handle it. I mean, yeah, we do a re-rank after each season too, because it starts to feel a little wrong at times, you know? <laughs> yeah and a lot oh, of wow. it I would, we would have like two hour discussions about this like we just we're just not going to ever allow ourselves to, to get into this detail okay. a lot of it is like there is no rhyme or reason to it it's just kind of like mm -hmm. yeah we kind of like this one better than this other one um but sometimes there's more important reasons i think we talked about it briefly before and um i mean i just came out out of the blue and i said hey this kind of needs to be at the top of our list right now we have mystery spot at number one uh lazarus rising at number two i know what you did last summer at number three Would potentially be our new number three right wow. um so that's kind of where we're feeling it at and right underneath it is no rest for the wicked uh which was the season three finale and that oh, was yeah. A discussion that we had like is it better than the finale um because i don't know about you guys but i think whenever i think of the finale i think about like the last five minutes and that's it yeah i always picture the entire episode being the raid on that house going after lilith but it really is only the last few minutes of the episode yeah right like i don't i was like well i remember the end <laughs> yeah, but, I, I, yeah. I don't think I could tell you anything else that happens in that episode. Yeah, and I've seen it like I was, ten I was, times. I was struggling to remember it. Yeah, I was struggling. <laughs> I was sitting here struggling to remember. It. I remember when we recorded about it, we ended up like being 
extremely interested in that cliffhanger, but not as much into the actual episode. Um, exactly. Because I think just all of the writer's strike and cutting the, the whole season felt, felt like it's cut short and all that. Like, wasn't at the beginning of that episode, wasn't Sam like, let's go find that doctor who was keeping each other alive by stealing organs? Like, what's that going on at the know. same time? No. <laughs> it's yeah. been too long. Right? It's been too that was long. a different one. I think that happened uh, in the pen penultimate episode, yeah, penultimate yeah. episode oh, of season so, three. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, at, at the start of season, uh, the season finale, it's just like, oh, hey, um, we found Lilith. Let's go after her. And so it's just rushing everything until we get to those mm -hmm. brilliant last five minutes. So yeah, like we did see this episode as being better done than that. I mean, it's just from the beginning to the end, I think we were like screaming because we were like learning <laughs> so much more new information. Um, and then also yeah, right off the bat, that scene where she's in the hospital and this woman we've never seen before is talking about Lilith and the 66 seals and drops the 600 seals bomb. What you know, it's just crazy from the beginning. Yeah. And we've been dying to know what Sam did last summer, you know? So it was a pretty great reveal. Yeah, you get um, you get a lot of good backstory. You get a lot of great human moments with the characters. You get a lot of great uh, lore, you know, meta plot stuff with Anna and, and angels and demons and Alistair. There's, there's to get. I mean, you get hunky Sam lifting Ruby, um, dude. So he's yeah, there's so a, there's fine a lot to... this episode. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, one it of our listeners. I, I'm telling you, I really dig the Venus. <laughs> He's, wow yeah. me and you are now mortal enemies we have a, a whole thing that popped jeremy up hates I, phoenix I, 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 oh I no so much. <laughs> it, like it became a thing on our on our discord because people are like actually phoenix are pretty cool and i'm like mm -mm, nope not not ever not 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 ever uh, not even once super sam not even with swole sam busting the stitches on those things jeremy <laughs> It would it would look better if it was just a normal collar, my man. I'm he bought, you. No, you wouldn't be able to see his chiseled chest. You get it all yeah. wrong. They understand. Yeah, that's the most important spot right there. <laughs> Seeing those chests. I don't know. I don't know, man. Give us some cleave, Sam. Give me that. Give me that chest busting out of the t-shirt. Give me the t-shirt that's two sizes too small. That's what we I'm had to say. You're here for like a like Captain a America ago. vibe. <laughs> I'm, I am totally here for the Captain America vibe. Okay, got it. <laughs> God, I just keep thinking about like the alternate universe where Jensen actually got the Captain American role that uh, Chris Evans got and just like wondering like, yeah, what would have happened? Yeah. So, yeah. That was really Jensen, Chris Evans uh, would have replaced Jensen on Supernatural. Did he go for Captain America? I thought he had gone for Hawkeye. Oh, I'll, I'll, I've always heard Captain America, but I, I could totally be wrong. This is all like. Interesting. You know, I could see none him of these either. are facts. Like, and, and I have holes in my brain that you could drive an Apollo through. I mean, so. <laughs> Hawkeye would get like a little less boring with uh, with Jensen behind it. Yeah. <sighs> have you all seen Endgame? I, I have, haven't, yeah. but I'm, I haven't I'm seen a, the I'm last a huge, Okay, I'm Kristen a huge hasn't MCU seen it either, so no spoilers. But I, I'm just going to say that I didn't care about Hawkeye until now. Oh, I could see that. I, could I see really that. just never cared uh, about yeah, him. He was just so he's been boring, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's and he's either been boring or absent for like a majority <laughs> of this stuff. Yeah. So. All right. See it. See it, guys. It's really good. I know. Um, OK, so I guess we're doing I know what you did last summer as the new number three. OK, this one's going in the trunk. We just slammed it in the fucking trunk right there. <laughs> Get in there. It's a really good sound. Damn, y'all got sound effects and everything on this podcast. Chris, we got to really get up. Up. <laughs> Oh, thanks, y'all. It's just one. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> it was just... So uh, I guess that's it. Any other final thoughts? Uh, no, thank you for having us on. Thank you for being yeah, absolutely. here. Absolutely. This, this has been an absolute blast. Yeah, it was really fun. Thank y'all for joining us. It's been a while since we've had guests on, and this was really fun. It was really fun. Um, where can people find you? So uh, our our website is monsteroftheweek.cool um, because you can just buy a dot .cool website nowadays. I don't know if you guys no. knew that. <laughs> That's pretty dot .cool. <laughs> it is pretty dot .cool indeed. Uh, there you can find links to all of our past episodes and um, links to merchandise. We have some really like, incredibly silly t-shirts and <laughs> stickers and things on our, on our merch store. Uh, and uh, we have a Patreon that's associated with the podcast. If you join that, you can hang out on our Discord server and chat with us directly. Uh, our podcast comes out once a week, every Thursday. 
Um, and we do kind of a similar thing as to what we did tonight on this episode. So like we, this is a similar kind of vibe, except it gets like we were being nice on this podcast and like we're, we're probably like 45 percent more weird and raunchy and just disgusting <laughs> so just prepare for all of that uh you can follow the podcast at at motw cast and i personally am at jg greer and i am at local bones on twitter if anyone's interested <laughs> awesome cool all right well let me tell you where to find us even though you probably already know but we've got our blog at www.highwayhwy to help podcast.com you can also find us on social media our handle is highway to help podcast we're on instagram facebook and twitter you can send us any questions or comments or whatever you feel like sending us um, and we also have a phone number. You can call and leave us a voicemail at 908-516-HELL, 908-516-4355. Or you can email us at highwaytohellpodcast at gmail.com. Um, and y'all know we've been doing more mailbag minisodes recently. So if you send anything along, if you would like us to, or if you would not like us to, you know, send us anything. But we can feature it on those mailbag minisodes and respond to you guys on our podcast. And. I think that's about it. Yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys, for joining us again. And until yeah, next time. Us. Thank you for having us. This was awesome. Cool. Bye. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you all on the highway to hell. Bye. Bye. Bye.